welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the business and the Sillyville editions. So we are going to start on in talking about Zoom has a new focus mode that could keep students from distracting each other. I mean, nothing worse. You're sitting there as a teacher. You're going on. You got some student picking his nose, doing this, and everyone else is going. Ah. Um, and so Zoom has released the new focus mode, which allows the host of the presentation to prevent everybody else from seeing them. But then the host can still see everybody. And so the idea here is to prevent students from seeing each other. I mean, I think that this will also prevent against uh, any uh, any possible um, uh, tubing situations as well. And so this could be a really good thing. I mean, it's going to prevent your Zoom bombers from going in there and doing something at least obscene on the camera, not necessarily on the microphones. Uh, but, uh, oh, here you go. Here's... Here's, whoa, look at this. Okay, guys, so like children this young don't need to be like on Zoom, at least not without their parents sitting right next to them. Just just, just kind of saying. But then over here, uh-oh, uh-oh, so, so here you go. Uh-oh, oh, oh, now everyone can only see the teacher. Oh, boy, do I do I even have these kids' names now? Oh, Lord, I hope these aren't real, real children. I don't know. Uh, oh, well. But anyway, uh, Zoom does have this new feature coming along down the pipeline so that you can... Uh, you can go ahead and uh, prevent people from seeing each other during the middle of your presentations. I guess that's an okay thing. But, um, yeah, maybe we, we need to rethink this whole idea of throwing children uh, <laughs> onto the Internet by themselves, teacher or otherwise. Um, Verizon apparently has purchased or at least trying to purchase TrackPhone. And uh, there's been some concerns about how Verizon, which is very well known for uh, how good it treats its customers, uh, how to protect the low-income users. And so they had made some new promises in the mergers. And we know that these promises that these big companies make are always valid. They always stick by. Um, you know, just everything from like, yeah, we'll never, you know, Facebook saying we'll never merge data between, you know, WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook. I mean, that will never happen, guys. Never, never, never. Um, unfortunately, as we know, it has. Um, but they're making promises to not raise prices on low income people for three years. Um, so I guess after three years time, then the low income track phone users, um, can, can, um, <clears throat> yeah, by Verizon. And so they're pledging this. And then a whole lot of companies that had a problem with this, they all backed off after Verizon made this pledge. Um, I, my prediction is that they're going to violate this pledge way earlier than they said. Prices are going to go up and they're basically going to damage one of the ways that a lot of people had to, um, to, help out their their bills with phones because i gotta say um having moved back over to verizon for my cellular internet for the van whoa is it expensive my god these people are price gougers there's just nobody else that can support my uh, individual device at this point in time um uh, for comparison the uh, verizon internet is like 160 a month and my mint mobile plan was 160 a year <laughs> Hmm, and I can even use my Mint Mobile as a hotspot. Uh, something I can't do with Verizon anymore because net neutrality. So uh, this did uh, raise some concerns. Everyone is back down now because they made some promises that they probably will not keep. But we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens. Well, Google, um, in the middle of their epic antitrust case, Google's like, let's just buy these guys. I mean, come on, we're big in Google. Let's just buy them. And so in the middle of all of this, Google's first attempt to stop the, uh, to stop the antitrust, uh, which dealt with uh, Epic being able to sideload Fortnite onto devices to get around Google's 30% cut of sales, uh, which... Hey, you know what? If people want to sideload an app, more power to you. That's what made Google kind of free from some of the antitrust, but they were having some of these issues with it. And so what ended up happening is that uh, they came out and uh, they they end up coming out and saying that, no, we're going to um, uh, try and just buy you instead. Uh, apparently, it didn't uh, it didn't uh, go over well. In the document, Epic repeatedly says Google viewed Epic Play Store and Round as a contagion that could disrupt Google's walled garden. Google even contemplated buying some or all of Epic to squelch the threat. Uh, Epic CEO Tom Sweeney tweeted that the plan was 
unbeknownst to him at the time, indicating that Google never went through the acquisition offer. So they never actually offered it. Um, but it is definitely something that they have considered doing. Not outside the realm of possibility, but that's how a lot of these big companies go. In fact, this kind of reminds me of uh, there's a, a uh, leverage episode where um, the, um, uh, the company is in the middle of a lawsuit and they're just trying to uh, buy out the company that's trying to get the guy to settle. <laughs> It's kind of kind of funny. Uh, juror number nine, I think, was that? Uh, I think that was up to season one, I think. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Amazon has a new plan to avoid lawsuits. Anytime a customer's injured by a product, it's just going to hear $1,000 P on go away. So Amazon creates new claims, processes that faces U.S. complaint over third-party sales. Amazon today announced a new policy which would pay customers up to nearly $1,000 when a third-party product causes damage or personal injury. Payments of any amount or less than uh, payments of any amount less than one thousand would be made at no cost to sellers who hold a valid insurance, but Amazon said it would also pay customers more than that when a seller refuses a valid claim. Uh, and this is a big problem on Amazon, as I said, the ambient light generator that I had used on the channel for quite a while it burst into flames one day, burnt part of the floor. <laughs> How exciting! Um, so, you know, that's, that's crazy. That's completely crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, Amazon says they'll investigate each claim. They, they can say, um, uh, they can say, uh, up to, what is it? The purchase of the product or compensation up to 100, uh, $1 million, excuse me, medical expenses, lost wages, property damage, approximated caused by the defensive, uh, by the defective products. But today they're, they're kind of working on this quick $1,000 payoff, realizing that probably a lot of these issues are probably going to be under $1,000. I mean, the damage caused, in my case, eh, it cost me a couple hours of work to clean a bunch of stuff up and it damaged a floor tile. Not super expensive to fix. But, um, you know, at the same time, though, that was damage. In fact, it cost probably more dollars in damage than this stupid product cost to begin with. So... There you have it. Um, Amazon does sell crap, and sometimes you take your uh, your best shot. You do the best you can at research, but whatever happens, happens. Well, in the middle of all of this uh, boom where nobody can find uh, employees, in fact, it's so bad, I went to Perkins the other day, and uh, the, the waitress was trying to convince me to apply for a job at Perkins. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but as this happens more and more, restaurant owners, I mean, I'm seeing many stores, many places, they have to cut hours, they have to shut down the business for certain times, certain days, because there's a labor shortage, they just don't have enough people. Well, now the rise of the machines again. I mean, Terminator's back with the rise of the machines. And so, the as what's going on here, these robots like Flippy and these other robots that can do things. We have a picture here of the, the robot that's uh, this is the, the Flippy French fry maker. So basically they're bringing on the robots that can take up some of the load, lighten the staff. And then the restaurants will be able to go back to full, uh, you know, full service. And then there will be, will be fewer people. This is all part of the government's plan to get people to stop. Why do we have so many so many places looking for employees? Well, I mean, I personally know people that are intentionally not going back to work right now because they make more money on unemployment because of these these stupid extra trillion dollar plans we keep on passing that my taxes are paying for. Thank you very much. And that's insane. That is insane. Um, you should go to work unless you are completely, absolutely disabled, absolutely cannot that's fine. We can help support people who literally can't. But for all these lazy bums out there who are like, I could go back to work, but why would I want to work when the government will just pay me almost about as much to stay at home? No, go to work, you lazy bum. And government, stop funding that crap. That's why we're starting to see this. But but now we're starting to see more automation. And now these same people go, there's no jobs. Robots took them all. Yeah, they, they took them all because y'all guys stopped showing up to work. You know what I mean? Um, but... There you have it, guys. So they're talking about a variety of different uh, different robots here. This is the robotic fry cooker. Uh, 
Flippy, um, Flippy from uh, Misra Robotics operates at Indiana's White Castle. Gets one hour of downtime per day for cleaning. The company's so happy the bot's performance is planning to bring in 10 additional restaurants across the country. So there's 10 more uh, or, or more, 10 plus more people that are going to lose their jobs because Flippy doesn't whine and complain and Flippy doesn't care if there's government subsidies. You pay the one-time fee and maybe a little bit of a maintenance contract and I guarantee you it's a lot cheaper than bringing on more employees. But uh, we have allowed this to happen because we stopped going to work because we were lazy and we decided that the government teat was a little bit more juicy than uh, actually going out for a job. And finally, Netflix combats VPN regions by uh, bypassing by blocking some residential IP addresses. So some people are realizing that a VPN is a good way to get around a, a geofence or things like that. And so Netflix started blocking uh, VPNs, but now there's some residential addresses that are caught up in this as well because some VPNs are actually using some residential IP addresses. And so Netflix is blocking entire residential IP blocks, which prevents a lot of people from getting services or I think it actually limits them down to just Netflix originals maybe I did see something about that that's this one here Raymond helps here if you don't have proxy VPNs other routing software still sees message contact ISP they'll um, be able to determine why your IP is a, a blocked um, is associated with a proxy or VPN use um, let's see one of these images maybe it was a different article I thought it was this article but it's talking about um, you can only view the Netflix originals because of the VPN or whatever else um, so that's kind of what they're doing uh, they are really going against these um, uh, against these VPNs <laughs> uh, by blocking resident addresses as well nothing like paying charging your company's money your uh, customers money and then blocking them from your service that's exciting well, I do have some affiliates. Today we're actually highlighting my science fiction novel, Synaptergy, which um, talks about some of the things we talk about on the channel, intersecting technologies and other things with morals and ethics. So you can have a, have a look over at synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s. You can come over here. You can read the whole first chapter. And I actually have the first uh, five minutes on audio as well. Just go ahead and allow your um, SoundCloud there. You can listen to the first five minutes of it as well. And then the where to buy link, you can pick it up directly from us or Amazon, Audible, iTunes, and then it'll tell you if it's eBooks, audiobooks, or uh, unlisted or, or print bounds or, or a variety of platforms. So anyway, uh, you can have a look at Synaptergy if you would like to um, help support the channel there or if you like science fiction. And uh, now we're going to move on over to Sillyville. First up in Sillyville, a Russian influencer is under investigation for driving a Bentley with his girlfriend tied to, tied to the roof. Uh, and it appears as though they're handcuffed together as well. So he is literally driving with one hand while he is handcuffed. He is handcuffed to his girlfriend who is tied to the roof. Like, how did, how did you, I guess he had to crawl in this side window. Like, if there's an accident here, like, people are, like, losing limbs. Um, but anyway, they'll do anything for views, including, it seems, trying tying their handcuffed girlfriend to the roof of the car and driving around. But the stunt landed him in trouble with the Moscow State Traffic Inspectorate, which is reportedly investigating the incident. Um, so he actually had another one, I guess, where he's doing... Um, um, uh, is this, like, a motorcycle into a water or something? I don't know. Uh, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, it's a bunch of nonsense, guys. This, this is the the downside of um, uh, of YouTube and other things like that. And on to our last article, One Crypto to Rule Them All. Apparently, the JRR token cryptocurrency is almost certainly headed for Mount Doom. Uh, this is not my precious. So what's going on here? They have this new crypto based on the Lord of the Rings. Um, one token to rule them all is what it says. I, of course, change it to crypto, but, you know, one token yeah, sounds good enough as I. 
especially since it's, you know, token, token. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. A lot of things. Now, they speculate in here that, uh, you know, there, there's a video here about it, but they're speculating that um, uh, Tolkien's um, estate will probably not go for this unless they are really cut into a lot of the funds. But they have not given it their blessing, but the way how litigious our world is, it's very, uh, very possible this may not actually go anywhere, so I'd probably be cautious about this one. One token to rule them all. One token you don't mind them. One token to hold them all and in the market to bind them. So there you are. Um, so that is the JRR token white paper. Um, okay, guys, this is getting interesting. This is getting interesting. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on all of these in the comments down below, and we will see you soon. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.